Now we don't necessarily want our effect to look like a flaming donut, at least not in this context. Currently the spawn mode on the position torus block is set to randomize, meaning the particles are sprinkled over the entire surface evenly, creating the impression of that ring of fire shape. What I could do instead is set the spawn mode to custom. And that'll spawn our particles on a small cross section of our torus instead of scattering the particles over the whole thing at once. Pop open the drawer next to the torus to see more options on how to control this mode. And we have basic dimensions of the torus itself to adjust the center of the ring. The major radius determines the size of the larger outer ring and the minor radius determines the size of the cross section. The arc angle and arc sequencer help you determine where to sample that cross section. The arc angle tells you how much of the main torus donut to use. This is expressed in radians. You'll see the slider run from zero to two pi or 6.28, which is zero to 360 degrees. The arc sequencer runs from zero to one. At zero, we're always gonna take the cross section at the beginning of the donut shape at zero degrees. Dial this to one, and we're gonna travel all the way up to whatever you have set at the arc angle. If your arc angle is set to the maximum, dragging the arc sequence from zero to one will take us through the full circle. If you have your arc angle set at a fraction of the full 360, then the arc sequence will just take you through that same fraction of the full circle. Notice that by manipulating these controls, we can make the particles look like they're flowing through a circular path in 3D space. That's gonna be important later, so just make a mental note of that. Okay, so we have a bunch of particles spewing from a little section of our torus, but we're still applying some random velocity after the particles are initially spawned. So we're gonna give each particle a little push at the beginning of its life, and it will stay moving at a constant rate, which looks a little unnatural. What's slightly more interesting is to apply a force to our particles instead of just giving them just an initial velocity. So this is something that can be updated every frame and allows for acceleration and deceleration over the course of the particle's lifetime. Let's disable that set velocity random or just delete that block. Our particles should suddenly disappear. They're getting spawned, but they're completely stationary on the surface of the torus. So don't panic, we're just gonna need them to start moving again before they show up. In the update context, we can apply forces. So let's go down there and let's create a force block. Create block, force, and we could add something like gravity, for example, that will make the particles drip straight down like they're flowing from a glowing spigot. And we probably don't want that, so let's just delete. Instead, let's add a block for turbulence. This simulates some rough random air movement it's gonna blow our particles off the surface. And that suddenly becomes a little more interesting. We can adjust the roughness of the turbulence to maybe 0.8 or something around there and intensity to about four or five. And you can make the particles stream off like they're forming a little flame. We can do one better and let's just add one more force, a vector field force. Create block, force, vector field force. A vector field is actually a 3D texture, but instead of storing color, it stores, as you might guess, vector information. So imagine if I littered the air with a bunch of 3D arrows directing traffic. If I could store that information within an image, that would be a vector field. We don't have a native vector field authoring tool inside of Unity. You could write a script to make one, but more commonly you would use an effects application like Side Effects Houdini to generate that. There's also a great little plugin from Django Effects called Vector Raygen on the Asset Store. Now, once you used an application like that to create a vector field, you can just drop that in here. Now we get a default vector field from the Visual Effect Graph package, and I'm just gonna use that. So we'll drop in the vector field 3D image. We can keep the default of unsigned, normalized, and relative mode. And under the field transform, I can adjust the size parameters to change the 3D scale of what the vector field covers. Unfortunately, we can't really visualize a vector field except for how we see the particles move. But let me guess something like two by two by two. And to turn up the effect on the particles, you can pump up the intensity, something between 10, 15. You can increase or decrease the drag and that will indicate how much air resistance that you will experience on the moving particles. And suddenly that's starting to make a very interesting shape. 
especially if I go back to the spawn context and I dial up the spawn rate to say 10,000. And we can be bold. I can crank up the initialized capacity to 50,000. This is, after all, GPU accelerated. How many particles you can handle really is just going to depend on your graphics card. And feel free to lengthen our original lifetime. And I'm going to make mine go between 2 and 5 seconds just to make the particles last a little bit longer on screen. It's glowing pretty hot now, so I'm going to dial down the size and the scale in X a little bit. And that will help reduce the glow of all the particles adding on top of one another. So let's just lower these values until it's not blindingly bright. Roughly 0.6 or 0.7 for the size and maybe 0.2 for the X scale. And this is the core look of our effect. Our particles form these nice glowing tendrils. Now there is something missing though. While the particles themselves are moving, where they spawn from on that cross section of the torus stays in one place. So the whole thing still reads as a little bit static. We can make things more dynamic if we can move the source of that spawn around the outer band of the torus. So some kind of motion in there will just make the particle effect look a little more organic. If you remember, by dragging the arc sequence, we could move the source of the particles along the outer ring. Adding a little motion in here gives us a lot of extra wispy smoke. Now just by dragging the slider manually, you can almost simulate that. Of course, you won't be able to do that at runtime. We can automate that using a node operation. Nodes are useful for defining extra formulas or procedures that will feed into the particle parameters that we have set up in the blocks. If you've used shader graph, this will seem really second nature to you. How we create them and connect them into logic works the same way. Creating a node is just like creating a block, except you do it outside of the context, usually off to the left. So I'll just right click in the empty area of the graph window, create node, or you can just press the space bar to go straight away to the node menu. We could try to create a short sine wave or some other trig function in here under operation math trigonometry. We do have a lot of math tools in here. But simpler than that is another handy node that we have under time, and we can choose periodic total time. That creates a little function that cycles through a range of values, very similar to a sine wave. We just have to define a period, how much time it takes to cycle through, and also define a range for the values to use. In this case, it's going to cycle between 0 and 1 every 5 seconds, then continuously repeat. So I'm just going to connect the output of this into the arc sequencer. And now every five seconds, you'll see the bright spawn area of the particles circle around the main ring of the torus. And already that's not too bad, but maybe you might want to slow that down. So let's change the period to 20 seconds. And now you're not even conscious that we're traveling around a ring. It's a little bit less obvious because there are all these turbulent particles getting blown all over the place. Just having that extra motion in there makes all the difference. Feel free to make any adjustments to change the look. You can dial a spawn rate up higher to 20,000, increase the capacity to 100,000. It barely seems to tax my system. Again, the limits of what you can put in here are just determined by your graphics card. You might want to experiment on your own by adjusting these settings further. And don't forget to add a little bit of motion into the other particle parameters. The major radius and minor radius of the torus are also good candidates to modify with our periodic total time. Now the variation in the range can be relatively small, but even just a little bit of change in here can make your effect read differently. Here are some different settings and the resulting effects. Animating each parameter just gives you that tiny bit of extra dimension to the particles. All right, well, I'm hoping you're beginning to see the possibilities of what you can do with all this stuff. At any rate, it's a pretty decent effect for 20 minutes or so. And yes, though I did spend several hours trying lots of different setups, after you spend more time with these tools, you'll be able to assemble effects like these faster and faster. Okay, well, that's all we have time for in this episode. Again, we've just scratched the surface of the visual effect graph, but this shows you roughly the bare bones workflow of using context, blocks, and nodes. There is a lot more clever stuff that goes into making these effects, of course. This is just a really simple example. If you enjoyed this video, check out our blog or other premium tutorials on the website. Make sure you subscribe to our mailing list to stay up to date on the latest game dev tips and tricks. Until next time, I'll see you in the game. Hall.